Hey gang, it's Will from Tested. And it's Norm from Tested. Norm, we're about to go see Morpheus. This is like the third or fourth time. Yeah, uh, Project Morpheus, which is Sony's PlayStation VR headset coming mm -hmm. out next year. Hardware is getting closer to being finished and they're showing a lot of games. A, a lot of games, including some things that use the Move controllers, things that are multiplayer asymmetrical experiences, and then also something that uses some weird custom controller we've never seen before. We're gonna try the demos and interview Dr. Richard Marks and then get back to you. So this is Dr. Richard Marks, director of PlayStation's Magic Lab, uh, spearheading Sony Morpheus, uh, PlayStation Morpheus. We just ran through the demos, and you guys are showing a lot of games here. You guys have a lot of developers on board. Uh, what changed since we saw you guys at GDC? Well, at GDC we had a big hardware announcement, and here at E3 we're showing a really wide breadth of content. So that's the big thing we're showing is lots of games. We did announce one new feature, which is that developers can choose to echo what the person in VR is seeing onto the television, on the social screen, or they can have something completely different shown there, and then you can have an asymmetric kind of gaming experience. And we're showing one of those which has four players with dual shocks against the guy who's in VR. And so that's really interesting because you're basically having five people playing on the same couch, one person wearing Morpheus, and PlayStation has enough power to power both the headset and that without any other you know, external graphics, basically? Yeah, exactly right. So the, it's kind of rendering two different views, one for the person in VR and then one for all the other players on the television. Now, for controller schemes, a lot of different ways that people are using the controller. Not only just the gamepad, but also the move controllers, attaching them to accessories, putting them on a bicycle. What are you letting developers know about what they can do and what they should do to make games fun and work with how you imagine Morpheus to work? So we're showing, we've been showing how it works with you can do interaction with just your head, some things like that, or you can use the existing DualShock 4 or the PlayStation Move controllers, and you can make a great awesome set of experiences with that. And then other developers want to explore more interesting things, more uh, exotic things, and we're, so, we're supporting them and looking into that as well with them. Are, are there any like, limitations like standing experiences versus sitting? Like You're just open to whatever they want to experiment with? Well, our focus is really sitting or standing and not not so much walking around with Morpheus. We have a, a you know a fixed camera that is re responsible for doing the tracking. So, yeah, really sitting or standing is what we're encouraging. And the move stuff, which is really cool. For example, that London Heist using the moves as uh, one is like ammo clip and one is a, a gun. Uh, that has triggers. That has good positional tracking. Uh, do you see developers when they're making games that the move controller they're using now? That's like the standard for what they would want to for when Morpheus comes out, like how the games would work? It, it really depends on the experience. I mean, you can, like the game Rigs we're showing on the show floor with six player, multiplayer over the network, that one's a great dual shock experience because you're kind of in a vehicle and that, that makes mm. sense. When you ha want to have like hands in VR, then, then the move is, makes more sense. So it really just depends on what kind of experience you want to create. And then ergonomics is a big thing. How comfortable you know the Morpheus is and, other, and HMDs are. How long do you imagine people or game experiences being for for Morpheus? Or are you expected to play, you know, a full game with wearing the headset or switch between TV and headset? I think it really depends a lot on the experience. But uh, I, I think actually the one we're showing, the London Heist, that one is great because it has different sequences that have very different pacing. So you have this really intense action sequence, but then you have this very calm like interrogation sequence there. So if, I think just like regular games, if you vary the pacing, you know, it can be any length. And it, with the new design of the ergonomics, you can really just, with a single button, push it away, you know, grab a drink or eat something or check your phone or anything. So there's really, it's very similar to any kind of media or game that we, you would have, I think. And you can really tighten it from like three points, right? Because there's the back tighten, you can actually move it away, it slides away from you. How long did it, get to, how long did it take for you guys to get to that point where that something that you feel you're comfortable with? Well, the mechanical designers looked at a lot of different options. They really liked the idea of having the weight on your head, not pressed on your face. Mm -hmm. And um, they wanted to support different head sizes and also glasses is a really important thing for us that it supports people who wear glasses. So that's why it moves away from the face like that. Mm. Really interesting. Um, do you imagine Morpheus changing a lot between now and when you guys want to ship it? Like, are you guys pretty happy with the hardware? There's still minor details that are being changed, but this is pretty much the set of things that we expect to ship as a product. And then on the software side, this, this PlayStation, the software changed at all how you launch games. You know, are you experiencing that through the headsets or something? Are you experimenting with that as well? 
So on the hardware side, we're like I said, we're mostly done with it, but uh, the system software now is under development to really make it support Morpheus in a good way. So I'm not really re ready to show that or talk about that yet, but we're working on it. It's something you guys are definitely thinking yeah. about. Yeah, VR is, requires a whole different paradigm for interaction with, with that stuff. It's with the system. Awesome. Software, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Richard. It was great to talk to you in CUD3, oh, yeah. and, and thanks. thanks for letting us check out all your games. Thanks, I'm glad you liked it. Great. Okay, Norm, uh, Morpheus, some real high points in those demos, some really amazing like games, like yeah. straight up games. Right, so I think the, the big story here is the games. Let's quickly touch on the hardware. Okay. I know people are gonna ask, you know, how does it compare to Steam? How does it compare to uh, Oculus? Oculus yeah. They're apples and oranges. I, well, no, they're both VR. The experience is much lower fidelity in Morpheus. Um, not in so much in terms of resolution and stuff like that. Just, you know, the PlayStation hardware is not as capable as, say, a $1,000 gaming PC is today. That's right. um, so you're going to see some jaggies, you're going to see some low poly stuff. Um, on a lot of the stuff that we saw today, it didn't matter. It didn't so, matter at all. Uh, some, the thing I do want to mention is the ergonomics on the headset, really good. Yeah, it totally changed yeah. Um, in terms of how you mount it. So it's still the Halo, yeah. still goes around the top of your head. Um, you stretch it out by pushing a button, you drop it over the back of your head. Clamp. Cl cl it springs back around your head. Tighten. You cinch it down with a knob, and then there's a button on the right thumb, I think? Right thumb, and then you can that move. That slides the visor in and out. Yeah. There's a GIF. Yeah. So comfortable aware, uh, you want to get that sweet spot for the focus. It doesn't press up against your eyes. It still has that like binocular rubber gasket around your eyes. Uh, and the flaps around your nose, I yeah. think. Uh, um, their optics are really nice. Yes. Like, there's a big, fat, sweet spot. Did you, did you wear it with your glasses on? I did wear them with my glasses on. How was uh, that? Big spot. I don't think they're using for now lenses because you can still see uh, the screen door effect. I could see that on Oculus, though, too. It was a different look. Yeah. Um, These but, look like square pixels. Exactly. I know. Yeah. So it's, it's an LCD, I think. So controller also positionally tracked real well. We saw that at GDC. You had the controller, both the move controllers, and the also the, uh, the DualShock, six axis. DualShock, yeah, DualShock controller also represented really well. Uh, but the games, oh, hold on, the 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 control the move the move controller represented really well. The DualShock is a little hinky because they're doing inverse kinematics to figure out where your shoulders are. So, for example, on the kitchen demo, which is a kind of horror game, you're sitting in a chair. If I moved my, eventually I kind of drifted so that my perspective was in the middle of where my chest should be yeah. and my shoulders were way up here. Well, it was a little weird. One at a time. Okay. Uh, Super Hypercube. Super Hypercube is awesome. Yeah. And this it, is the one where it's like Tetris VR. It's, it's, if you've ever seen the, the Japanese game show Hole in the Wall, yeah. uh, where you know, you have to make a pose to fit through the hall. It's like that plus Tetris. Yeah. And you have to kind of use the VR goggles and the perspective shifts to actually see the hole because the block fills up a lot of your perspective, a lot of your field of view. Right. The block travels through a hole. You got to rotate it, spin it around so it fits perfectly. Oh, I'm so and into that game. Really fun. Uh, that one did have a floating controller, but you don't get your hands represented. Next, the kitchen demo uh -huh. where you're seated. And that's one where you say it models your hands being tied because you're locked in a room. Which I think we'll see a lot of if you're using dual shocks and they're modeling hands. And that's interesting because you're abstracting hands being tied by holding the controller. Well, so so they're what they're doing is they're tracking the, the light bar on the front of the controller and then using the IMU inside the controller and, and using your their knowledge of human skeleton and anatomy to figure out where your elbows and stuff right. are. It works out okay most of the time, but when it goes wrong, it's kind of hilarious. Yeah, so the elbows do move around weird. Yeah. Not exactly how your elbows would move. It was a horror demo, lots of horror demos. The monster comes from behind. I, I found that that one, especially in the dark room, was a little bit, it was the least good looking of the demos that we saw today. They were also trying for the most photorealism. Yeah. So I think that there's probably some connection there between photorealistic stuff, stuff that you're familiar with, versus you know fantasy settings or maybe abstracted, you know more more abstract settings. Now asymmetrical gaming, five player Morpheus. One person wears a headset. Mm -hmm. You were you were a dragon moving around. Just using my head. Just using your head and four people with controllers running away from you, seeing the screen. Now, this oh, you guys were the ones running, I didn't know who you were. We were, it, it was really interesting because it showed that the PlayStation could power not only the visuals of the Morpheus, but also then output a separate image, different perspective on the TV, so you can get five player gaming. No, no. This is their equivalent of the Wii U. Or something like uh, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, yeah. where where this is, this is the entry game for VR. You get your Morpheus, I think that this will probably be the first thing you fire up, 
you put it on, everybody in the family tr takes a turn on the controllers, everybody takes a turn on the, on the, on the headset. Um, it's worth mentioning this was a lo-fi model compared to like normal 2D PlayStation 4 games and even some of the other demos that we saw today. And we're talking about differences between Oculus you know, and SteamVR, which are computer-based desktop experiences. This is where it maximizes that couch experience in the living room. VR yeah. the living room made for asymmetrical experiences. Um, then you tried one with accessory, the gun. Yeah, yeah, so this was a tech demo made by Impulse Gear. Um, and it's it, in addition to normal you know, normal VR stuff where you can move your head and look around, they had built a controller out of like the Frankenstein parts of a move controller, it's nav controller, PS4 controller, put it on one of those plastic guns that you snapped the move controller in last generation. Um, and, and Obviously, this is an oversimplification because it's not that hardware anymore. But you basically had an independently fireable gun that was independent of your viewpoint. So kind of like in the London Heist that we saw at GDC where you could pick up the gun, aim down the sights and all that stuff. You could do this with a rifle that you were holding with two hands. Uh, your left thumb controlled movement. The right thumb you could do uh, turns to kind of adjust your perspective if you drifted or if the world turned. Um, and then you shoot, fire. Uh, you basically use your two triggers to, to shoot. Was it um, on rails or was it a free? No, you were, you were free moving. So your the left thumb stick was uh, strafe movement, forward, back, left, and right. And like you could get through the world, you could use cover, you could lift the gun up over your head, shoot over a rock, get the angle that you needed to, to kill something without necessarily having to stick your body out. Did it take you out of presence because you were using a thumbstick to move and not moving your legs? Um, that part wasn't so bad. There was a little bit of drift occasionally that was kind of uncomfortable, uh, like in a VR sickness kind of way. Um, they were very quick to point out, A, they're breaking the rules about first person movement in VR. They're moving much faster than you're supposed to move. Uh, they said that they were able to do that because they're not giving you points of reference that are that are that your brain is familiar with. So you were able to move faster because it was a really large world. There wasn't like fire hydrant, something that you know how big it is and how fast you're moving toward it. Um, aiming was really good. There was a laser pointer on the a laser sight on the front of the gun. You could also aim down the sights a little bit, but but the way you were shooting it was by pointing putting the dot on the thing you wanted to kill and pulling the trigger. And that's something I realized also with the London Heist demo, which is sit down. You're in a car driving. That one, the aiming worked really well. You're you aiming with the, the sights, one, right? You're aiming with the Uzi, and the tracers allow you to, you know, point forward and aim, aim up, aim, aim at cars, motorcycles. I thought it'd be difficult to shoot at the tires of a car driving alongside, but with the ammo, with the tracers, it was really easy. Were you tap, tap, tapping, or were you holding oh, down, holding spray and pray? Spray and pray, holding down and dragging, and it was really fun. I like the way that they're using chairs for the London Heist demos for sit-down experiences. Um, it, it felt more like being there than than a stand-up. Like that game feels like something that's going to be a series of vignettes that you take the helmet off, the glasses off in between, come back in the real world, and then sit down for the next chapter in the in the game. And then finally, this thing looked really weird. Uh, this one, you're riding. You're they attach the, the hardware, the controller hardware, to a bicycle, and I'm pedaling. I'm riding a horse, and the horse, you know, I'm pedaling to simulate riding a horse. It can be any vehicle. It can be a tank. It could be a UFO, it could be actually a bicycle. But I'm wearing the Morpheus, the VR headset, to look around. Is this a fitness game? No, it's, well, the idea is that you can blend fitness with virtual experience. And I did want to pedal more, because I did get wings for the horse, I'm flying over a canyon, pedaling harder to get higher lift. My <laughs> worry for it, and it was, it was really fun and immersive, my worry for it is too much immersion for that, I, I wanted to sway my body. And oh. that could have been bad. You, well, so they had the bike on a big exercise mount that was fairly wide. It looked a little ungainly, especially if you're somebody my size and height. Yeah. It seems like I could have taken that thing down in a way that wouldn't exactly. have been good. Did it feel at all like birdly when you were flying? A little bit. So it gave you that okay. really good presence of not only am I steering, I'm also pedaling and I'm looking around. And that was really cool. But like I said, if you get too much into it, you pedal too hard, it was I could see someone down the line if it's not if they're not safe with it, turning too hard and just knocking themselves over. Do you picture a world where you go to the gym and there's 40 people on a row of exercise bikes wearing goggles flying virtual horses? I don't think it's gonna be a bicycle, maybe like maybe like a, a one of those steppers. Elliptical or Elliptical something like that? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty much it. Uh, any other closing thoughts from you, Norm? Um, I think, you know, Sony wants to show a lot of developers on board. Oculus wants to show a lot of developers on board. Uh, Morpheus, I think they, they prove that they know 
what hardware they can get out of the PlayStation 4. Yeah. That shouldn't be a big concern. Obviously, we didn't spend enough time with it to get nauseous or anything, or to experience if nausea was possible. One of the things they did touch on is that they're they're going to allow developers to put mini VR experiences on retail discs or downloads. So if you want to take your assets that you built for your you know 30 frames per second AAA big ass game and you know strip that down to the point that it'll run on the on the Morpheus, you're totally going to be able to do that. Yeah. Which is, that sounds interesting. I I really want to see more VR experiences like the ones we've seen today. And they're showing stuff that is still I think as polished or more than most of the other developers we've seen for the most People part. People who own PlayStation 4s, this won't be an afterthought. This, there's gonna be cool stuff yeah. if you buy into Morpheus next year. So, so that's it. That's it from E3 2015. More stuff, more tech, more VR stuff on test.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the video, and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.